Hello my friends, John LaRufa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at this game, which has been out for a while, The Colonists. So, let me give you a good understanding of how this game plays from a solo perspective, so that you can see what you think of it from the gameplay, and whether it's right for you or not. Let's take a look. Okay, and folks, please, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as it greatly helps me out. So this is the game, this is what it looks like at the halfway point if you're playing four eras, okay? So this is the start of era three. You can see that I've got a lot of stuff on my board. There's a well-developed um, map, so to speak, out here for where you're traveling to get different things. Um, and then I've got over here the uh, little po um, pouches of different buildings you can build in this game. You've got your citizens, you've got money, tools, a variety of different uh, goods. I mean, and just so I let you know, this and these containers do not come with the game. I provided them just because there's just so many components. Um, it was annoying to try to set that up. And then you have on these sides here, you have these sheets which track the different guilds um, that you put into the game. And these different things uh, allow for um, a varied experience from game to game because there's more than just these five out here. There's several more. Um, and um, and when you add those together, they change up the uh, the feel of everything as far as what you do each time. So, um, and I, they're not guilds, they're colonies. Sorry about that. Okay, so what is the gameplay like? This game is more of a simulation, I think, than a game, to be honest. On your turn, you are going to do... You're basically going to move your pawn here, um, three spaces, okay? And he is going to move, and when he goes to space, he must take the action in full. If you can't take the action in full, you end your turn by jumping to one of these market spaces here. And when you jump to the market space, you have a choice to do the top part where you can sell some different goods. For money, you can get... Um, or collect goods, or you can do some kind of building action. In this case, you could trade all those things in to build one iron mine. The um, tiles on the board here grow as you play. So basically, at the, at the end of each year, you are going to put the three revealed tiles over here someplace on the board. And they have to touch basically two edges of different tiles. And you're going to strategically put those down where you are, kind of next to other things to get little synergistic bonuses for when you're traveling. You are also going to have the opportunity to draw cards. These cards can be played and they uh, usually allow you to do something in a cheaper fashion or give you some kind of goods or things like that. So there, there's many cards in this game that you can get um, and the card play is a bolt-on, I would say. I would say that it is not necessary to have to get the cards and do that. It's kind of an extra thing. Um, the colonies also are things that will help you tweak your game and maximize certain aspects. So for instance, this shopkeeper colony, which I have built one of them, helps you to do a better job storing different goods and storage and logistics are important in this game. Whereas the trade colony lets you do varieties of different trades. You know, I can turn wood into food or food into, um, into clay uh, for the first level. And as you get through the eras, you can go into higher levels and you upgrade your building and get more and more benefits. And so those are pretty varied. And they also have some that introduce different pawns onto the board, which do different things. Some that are um, really more helpful in the multiplayer game, but there's most of these can be used pretty effectively in the solo game as well. Now, the other thing I will say is that this is a true, complete beat your score solo experience here. There's not even any real solo rules in the actual rule book. You just play the game by yourself. Um, and the fact is you just won't bump into any other pawns, uh, pawns out here, which is really the only interaction you get in this game. So normally what happens is when you are playing multiplayer, if you land on the space that someone else is, you've got to pay this fee. Okay, well... That just doesn't exist in the, in the solo game. So playing the solo game gives you the full experience um, as far as the gameplay. With, without that little bump, who cares? I mean, there's so much going on in this game, you don't really need to worry about that, to be honest. So let me give you an idea of kind of a solo turn. So starting this year, I would start over here. I've already drawn the card, okay? And that's what this card is right here, kind of showing me what's going on in the market. And I've turned these three buildings over. 
and these things will be added at the end of the year. So I will take three moves, okay? So let's say I wanted to take um, this move right here, and I would go and get two clay, okay? And I pick up those two clay, and I have to have a place to store them. So my storage areas are either my basic storage up here, some warehouses with people on them that are activated, or these warehouses, I'm sorry, these are storage houses, there's a difference, or these warehouses over here. The deal with this game is, is that goods are only available to be used when they're in your basic storage. You can always transfer from the warehouse to the storage. You can also have them on your production queue over here, which means they were just built the turn prior at the end of the year. But before you use them, you have to be able to physically put them in a storage spot to use them. So there's a little bit of logistics there where you cannot use from your warehouse. You gotta take things, move them into there, and you can move back and forth between these things at any time, but you have to have spaces for them. And uh, here you cannot. Once they leave the queue, then they're off. And so that was a simple move right there. I just took two clay, right? And maybe I need to get some brick. Maybe I need to get some wood. Well, I can go ahead and I can go down here and I could get uh, two wood. Simple, right? So now I have to have the spot for these two wood. Well, let's see if I do have a spot. Right here, I have, this is maxed out at three, so I don't have a spot there. This is five. I've already got five um, clay on this one. This one's five, I've got five. So I have a spot, but it's one down here and one up here, which means collecting anything else is gonna get tight because I don't have any room for it. So I'd have to either discard something or, um, or, or refine something. And that's what I'm gonna do with this third turn here. I'm going to go ahead and move here. I'm going to refine one wood and two, um, and two clay into one brick. And there's a better version way down here, but it's so far away, and I can't just walk there. I have to be able to use the actions as I go. All right, so I'm going to take two of these and one of these. So that's one load. Let's do it again. That'll be two loads, and let's do it a third time. Okay, and that'll be three bricks right there. You know what, and just for good measure, let's maximize our turn and go one more. So that's four bricks. So I would spend all that, I would collect four bricks, and I'm gonna use those bricks to build a variety of different things. And I'll show you kind of how that works in a second. This game is incredibly fiddly, folks. If you don't like fiddly games, you're gonna have a time and a half moving this stuff around. Um, almost to the level of Roads and Boats, which is probably the most fiddly game I own. I don't mind the fiddliness, to be honest, but I know that some people might, and you're going to have that here. And there's no real way of, around it. You can't really put trackers any place because they have to be physically located in those areas to, to block the logistics. Okay, so that was, my, that was three turns right there. One, two, three. Boom. Done. Now, I would move this here and take another three turns. Okay? Now, let's say I want to build something here. I want to build... The pub okay so if I want a pub I'm still missing these boards all right so I've got to generate some boards so why don't I go over here I'll take two wood they're probably lumber not boards but you get what I'm saying so I have to have space to storm so I still have two spots over here so we're good then I move here and I can turn these two wood and I can even move these off my queue here turn two more into some lumber, and then turn, move this and this off my queue into the storage and the warehouse to turn that to that. So now I have three lumber. Okay, why do I want to do that? Well, I'll show you. Because then in my final turn, I want to build a pub or two. So I can go here, and that says if I spend one tool, one um, clay, one brick, and one wood or uh, lumber, I can build a pub. And why not? Let's go do that. Everybody loves a pub. So, whoops, I'll put these away. So, in doing so, I will go ahead and spend one, one, um, and uh, one, and then a tool, right? This is a three tool, so let's go ahead and swap it in for some change. And that gives me the opportunity to build a pub. Pubs will generate me money, and that's good. But I have to have somebody working in the pub. Okay, so when I build that pub, I put it on my board someplace, one of these free spaces. And this does not open up until round or era four, so I'm getting constrained. I also, as you can see here, have to have a green person to work with. Well, luckily I do. I have one green person sitting out of this farm. And when I go ahead and I install him, 
I have to pay the cost to put him to work. Well, luckily with a green person, there is no cost. But if I was going to put a yellow person to work, I'd have to immediately pay a food. And if I was going to put a red person, um, a noble, that's a citizen. I think it's a worker, a citizen, and noble. Um, and then I have to pay two food and a um, clothing, or yeah, clothing basically. So I put him to work, and that means that during the production phase, which will come pretty shortly, I will go ahead and I will produce one coin. That's good because the, the coins plus the, well, basically all your coins are how you score in this game. So everything has a coin value, and that tells you how you're going to score at the end. Plus you score for your employed people that are people that are not sitting on farms or in their estates or in their flats at home, but no, actually physically working because you're, you're trying to build that up. So anyway, I paid for that one pub, and I'm not going to build another one because I'm kind of running low on room here. So I'm not going to just go hog wild. I'm going to leave some extra spaces, and let's go ahead and take care of that. So we built the pub. We've employed the guy. That was our third turn. Now we go to the end of the round. So at the end of the round, we're going to put out these three buildings here. Okay, this building would allow me to build a boarding house, which gives me another pawn to put someplace else strategically, and that might be very helpful. So I'm going to put him up here, okay, because that could be good. All right, um, but that's going to be tough because that's stone. Or well, that I have to get, I have to get this. This is iron, and you have to refine that. So that takes some doing. But we'll get there later. All right, and then I'm going to put this out here, which allows me to upgrade a flat to a house. Let's put this over here, and the, that may, basically allows me to get the red guys, which are worth the most points and can activate some of the bigger stuff. And then over here, this one allows me to uh, upgrade hunting lodges into hunting grounds. That's really good. So let's put that over here. And the idea is I'm trying to put it in spots where I know I'll cross over to get some of those resources, okay? So I put those out. Now I have to do some balancing work to see if everything's good. So the first thing I have to do is I can, at this point and this point only, I can redistribute my workers. So normally you can only redistribute them from the farms or their houses to the buildings you want to activate immediately. At this point, I can deactivate buildings. I can change them around. And it's important to be able to do this only now because when you want to upgrade your farms to a, a, a state, the guy's got to be there. And if I want to upgrade this flat to the next one, I can't remember what it's called, um, the person has to be there. He has to be physically there to do it. But as it is, I'm not going to move anybody around because I'm happy with the way this is set up at the moment. So we're good. It doesn't cost anything to move anybody from here to here. But if you were going to put people to work, then you'd have to pay for them. Um, but you have to actually have to pay at the end of this end of the, uh, the round here. So now, after everything is good, I have to make sure I have balance. So I have to cough up all of this stuff right here, okay? Um, so you have to sustain first. So that means I have to have food, one, two, three, four food to do my sustaining. Well, in this case, it's kind of simultaneous. I know it goes, it says you do this in the production phase, but you can sustain them directly from their buildings without having to have the goods come up first. So that's good. But anyway, we have one, two, three, four that need four food. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these two, um, one, two, and then three, four is going to come out of this one right here. Okay, now you say, well, John, there's only one there. Well, I have this little factory that gives me a bonus to get extra stuff. I'm also going to move this clay off of this spot. Notice how fiddly that is. All right, and I'm going to put it over there, and I'm going to mess up my whole board. Okay, so again, I had to pay for food. I did it two from here and two from my spot over here. Okay, so that's my food. Everybody's accounted for. Now I have to produce all the stuff I make. Well, I make three tools up here. So we'll grab three of those. I'm going to make three, because of my factory, I'm going to make three wood. So I'm going to put that on that, that queue again. Okay. Ugh, so sloppy. I'm going to make two food here. And I'm going to make two food here. I already used the food there, so I can't redo that because I've already used it. And then I'm going to make one coin there, not two, because the factory doesn't let me pump out more. So he goes right into there. You get unlimited storage for tools and for coins. Everything else is restricted. And then I get two clay over there. Okay? And that is it from what I'm producing. And so that is the end of the round. And then at this, oh, and then finally at the end of the round, I'll also re reveal my next three tiles, which I'll be placing 
at the end of the next year. And that's it. So then I would start over. I would flip another card over over here. And I would continue on. All right, so that gives you an idea of the, the basic gameplay. You're going to be moving your guys around here, doing little chains, little clusters of things, gathering, turning them into things, building things, putting guys to work. The whole overall goal is to get the most points possible. And again, you score based on the point values on the buildings plus the amount that you get for each employed person. And these are worth a little bit. These are worth a little more. Those are then the red are worth a lot. And so basically what you're trying to do is make sure you can get a bunch of people employed plus go up on these, these tracks here and generate a bunch of money on the way. Again, very much a simulation um, as far as what you're doing. And that's about the size of it. So let me tell you what I think of it. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll see if this is something that you would care to own or not. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the way the game plays. Now let's talk about some of the ups and downs, the things I like and the things I don't like about it. And in no particular order, I'm just going to go stream of consciousness here. First things I like is that it has a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of different buildings you can try to build. There's tons of different ways that you can go. Um, it's very much a simulation game. It's, it's, it's one of the most pure sandbox type games I've ever played where, you know, you're just basically trying out excuse me, different strategies, different things to, um, you know, work on just generating your engine, right? Because in a lot of ways, it's somewhat of an engine building game where you've got to have this supply this so you can get bigger these and then you can upgrade it and so on and so forth. So there's a big part of that. There's also a big part of the strategy on moving your person around. So when you saw me play those six turns, I luckily could move six different spots. But sometimes, you run out of things or you get in a hole and you say, well, shoot, I can't move to any spots because this one requires me to turn this into that. This one says I got to do this to build. I don't have any of that. So then I have to blow my whole turn by going back to the market and kind of starting over. And so this game rewards solid planning and some really forward thinking um, you know, strategy to see what can you get done and what can't you get done and um, you know, how much, how many resources to spend. There's a lot of layers here and there's a lot of different things to explore. Even though the buildings are the same in all the games, those different colonies of which are there seven or nine, there's several you play with, you start with four, you add one more. So you have different ones throughout the game. And, and honestly, I've never built a colony in all of them more, more, um, and not even come close to upgrading them all either, like throughout the course of the game. Because they are, uh, again, it's something you have to focus on and try to think about and how to maximize. So those are all good news things. I also like the artwork. I like the, the crispness of the way the components look. I think they're high quality. Um, and, you know, really it's, it's a fun game to look at. There looks like there's tons of things going on. It is a little bit of a table hog. I barely managed to fit it into my card table, but um, that was thanks to the, some of those storage options. Some of the negatives. Um, very much a beat your own score. And because of that, there could, there's, there's only a lack of, ten, or there's only an implied tension. There's really no tension in the game, but you could be doing a poor job and then you'd finally figure it out like as you're going. It, it's kind of a game you have to play a couple of times to get a barometer of whether I'm doing well or not. They say that, a, uh, well, they as in people online on BoardGameGeek have said that 400 is a good solo score. I haven't come close to that. I've been in the 200s. But there's some people somehow that figure out even how to get into the 900s, and I don't even know. It is definitely one of those games where as you ramp up, you can grow that score exponentially depending on how well those you've set yourself up. And so for the optimizer out there, this game really has it because there's a lot going on there that you can optimize. It's all about optimization. But um, I can say that there is no, you know, there's, it is not a game that makes you feel pressured. You don't feel constrained. It's wide open. It's a very wide open sandbox. And I would say I don't like that about that. I'd rather have some other kind of pressure there. I mean, obviously, if you get a bad score, then there you go. But throughout the game, you don't exactly know, unless you've played it multiple times, whether you're ahead of that curve or not ahead of that curve. The other thing that adds to the randomness of it, which is fine is when the buildings come out, okay? So you have those spaces and their stacks where one, two, three, and four, 
but you don't exactly know which era, order they're coming out in. And sometimes that does have a big difference on how much you can do. Now, I haven't played it enough to know if it's if it, it's a dirt, really a solid deterministic um, difference. But I definitely have had games where I'm like, gosh, this tile needs to get out here sooner rather than later. If it's at the end of the era, it's almost like I didn't even get to use it, especially near the uh, end of the fourth era. So that can have a big impact, I think. Um, and, you know, I understand why they do it to try to make for some variety. But I also think that it, it's with a game that's got this much going on and, and takes this long. It's unfortunate if you're looking for some of those end game buildings and they show up near the end, near the end of the end of the era and you don't get to capitalize them on them. So that's kind of a negative, I think. Uh, I think this game is not going to appeal to everybody. I think there's going to be mixed mixed feelings on it, to be honest. I've kept it for a couple years, but i got to tell you, I've, I go years without playing it. I play it once. It's enjoyable. Put it back in the box. It sits on my shelf for a while. I pick it up again in a couple years and play it again. It's not a go-to solo game for me. Um, it has some aspects that I really like, but I would say I'm even mixed on it as well. Um, I still like the idea behind this and i was hoping they would re release some scenarios or some more things maybe they have i haven't looked too hard on them over the years uh but generally i i end up playing a four era game and when i finish the fourth era i look at my score and see how i did that being said in the last couple of years i've only played it four times to be honest um and that kind of tells you something so if you like this kind of sandbox game, there's a lot to love here. These kinds of sandbox games can be good for me or not as good. I love Roads and Boats. Somehow this does not quite reach that level by any stretch of the imagination. And I don't know why. It just doesn't. In a lot of ways, it feels like Roads and Boats and some, and some of the sandboxiness and everything else. But for me, it's just not there. So I've got a mixed feeling on this. And that's why I'm doing the review so that you can see sometimes it's uh, it's worth your time if you like these sorts of things. Sometimes you got to be careful. This one has a lot of trappings uh, that look good, but I think the lack of tension and that overall, um, it's almost too open with that randomness of the buildings, I don't care for as much. So that's my thoughts on it. Hopefully this has been informative to you. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And whatever you play in the future, have a great time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.